Hey everyone, Nathan Firth here with another video from ServicePortal.io. With this release, I wanted to try something a little different and cover my personal top five features available in the Orlando release of ServiceNow. If you find this video useful, be sure to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with our latest videos, insights, and tutorials on everything ServiceNow and Service Portal. Let's get started. Starting at number five, we have the new widget diagnostics feature for Service Portal. One of the challenges of upgrading your instance is identifying areas where the platform has deviated from the out of box. And in Service Portal, that primarily consists of which widgets have been cloned or modified. With this new tool, you can quickly and easily review the widgets and customizations of any given page. To try it out, first go to a page within Service Portal. Hold down the control key on Windows or the command key on a Mac and click on a widget. From that context menu, select Show Widget Customizations. Now all of the widgets will get a colored outline indicating the widget and the level of customization. Green represents an out-of-box widget, yellow is a cloned widget, blue is a new custom widget, and red is a baseline widget that has been altered in some way. And also if you click on the info icon, it opens up a new modal with some additional information about that widget. Now one of the really cool things about this feature is that it also works on embedded widgets. For example, the header menu widget, which is embedded inside this stock header widget. So make sure to check out this handy feature next time you're approaching an upgrade. At number four, we have mobile branding. Prior to the Orlando release, the ServiceNow mobile apps were limited to just ServiceNow branding and colors, but now you'll have the options to create your own theme to match your organization's branding. To create your own theme, navigate to Client Themes inside the Mobile Branding module. Open an existing theme record or click New to create a new theme. But in this example, we're just going to use the default theme. And now we're going to change just a couple of values. And now if we open up the app from my phone, I can see that all of the new colors have been applied. ServiceNow also offers a private label version of the mobile app, where additionally you can configure your mobile app with a unique name, splash screen, and icon. However, this does come at an additional cost and the feature must be activated by ServiceNow personnel. Coming in at number three, we have Workspace UI Builder. The UI Builder is a brand new drag and drop tool that enables you to arrange workspace components to create custom landing pages. To build a page, all you have to do is navigate to Workspace Experience, select a workspace, and once the form loads, click Open in UI Builder. Now from here, you can simply drag components from the left menu onto the stage. If you drag a component around the outer edges of another component, you'll notice that it provides some pretty cool options for generating layouts and columns. You can also configure each component by adjusting the properties in the configuration pane on the right. At this time, it only supports six components, but I can imagine this becoming much more powerful in future releases. Number two, extension for Visual Studio Code. One of the common questions I get asked is if it's possible to use your own IDE when developing apps on ServiceNow. Now there have been some independent efforts to create plugins in the past, but nothing has been officially supported. But now with Orlando, ServiceNow is adding an official extension for Visual Studio Code. And this is huge, you guys. And if you're wondering what's the big deal, there are many major advantages of being able to develop apps in Visual Studio Code, including being able to edit your applications offline and then syncing again when your instance is available. Also, Visual Studio Code has advanced JavaScript editing features like IntelliSense, which includes code completion, code suggestions, and quick info, which will help you complete your coding tasks much more quickly and reducing errors. And finally, at number one, we have the greatly improved source control integration. This one is huge. Prior to Orlando, pushing and pulling from Git was limited to using Dev Studio, and it also had a number of major limitations that made the process quite frustrating. But in Orlando, I am so happy to say it is much, much better. Some of the new features include editing application files outside of Studio. In previous releases, if you as much as touched a file in Git, it would fail with a checksum error. But now with Orlando, this means we can edit application files using any external editor. Now keep in mind, the instance will still validate and sanitize any changes you make outside of ServiceNow. 
Also, we can now move files to any folder in the repository, as well as adding supporting content such as automated tests in the same repository as the application. And lastly, when committing, we can now select which specific files we would like to commit to source control instead of having to push the whole application. So there you have it, my top five favorite features in the Orlando release of ServiceNow. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, this is Nathan Firth and happy service portaling.